talk to you about SSH, which stands for uh, Secure Shell. Um, this is what I'm going to cover. What is SSH, the history of SSH, encryption and security, public and private keys, SSH, and you. So what is SSH? SSH, or Secure Shell, um, it's an encryption protocol that is used to communicate securely on a public network that may not be secure. So if you need to connect to a server and you don't want to like broadcast your username and password, you'd use SSH to do that. Um, it operates in the application layer of the Internet Protocol Suite. And other examples of application layer, uh, layer protocols are like HTTP, FTP, basically anything that communicates with another application. Um, the cool thing about SSH is that anything that you want to communicate with, you can communicate through SSH. So if you wanted to wrap something in SSH so that way nobody else could read it, you could. So history of SSH. There was a time before SSH, we used something called Telnet. Telnet was not good. <laughs> Telnet would just use plain text to communicate over the network. That is not good. So anybody who's sitting there looking on your network could see everything that you're communicating, which is not good. Um, so it was not created to be good. It was not created to be secure, because this was back before they thought about that. And they were just like, who's going to use the internet for something malicious? People do. Um, <laughs> so with that was also our login, RSH, and RCP. RCPs used to copy files. Um, RSH is remote shell. But it also uses Telnet, so it's not encrypted. Um, our login is just a way so that you can like communicate to another server, and it will remember you and go, "Hey, I trust this guy." Still, everything's not encrypted. Not good. So, if you are using Telnet, and somebody on your network has something like Wireshark, they can look at your packets, follow your your Telnet connection there, and then follow it, and they will get something like this, where you can see the username and the password and pretty much anything that you're sending on the network. Not good. Um, so along came this guy, uh, Tatu Ulanen. He's Finnish. He created SSH. And like most programmers, they create things when they find a problem. So he was at university, and he saw somebody was sniffing passwords and using them for malicious things. So he created SSH. Um, it was freeware for a long time. And then he said, OK, I'm going to make a company, and you guys can't use it. So other things came out, like open, open SSH. Um, so you can't use SSH unless you understand security. I mean, you can, but you should know about security and encryption. Um, there are two versions of SSH. SSH1 and SSH2. SSH1 uses DES and 3DS. These are not safe. You should not use these. Um, DES has an effective key length of 56 bits, which is not a lot, which I'll explain later. Um, but AES, you can't break it as of right now. Um, you can't use brute force to get through it. It would take the entire length of the universe in time to do it. Um, so yeah, use, use SSH2, use AES or Blowfish. Um, yeah. So a little image to break up all this, all this boring cryptography stuff. Um, so there's two different types of encryption. There's symmetrical encryption and there's asymmetrical symmetrical encryption. Um, in asymmetrical encryption, people exchange, you, you go and give somebody your public key. And you go, OK, I'm going to encrypt something. And I'm going to send it to them. And then they're going to use that public key to decrypt it encrypt something else and send it to you, and then you can use their public key to decrypt it. You cannot derive the public key, the private key from the public key, so it's safe. You do not want to give anybody your private key, because then they can decrypt all traffic. So you give them your public key, you exchange public keys, you can communicate. With symmetrical encryption, you take somebody else's public key and your private key, and you encrypt it, and that's called a shared secret. So you could do that in this example with either Alice or Bob. And then also with Alice and Bob in the asymmetrical encryption. So here's a cool example of when you communicate with GitHub, you create a private key. You can see that. 
private key and a public key, and you give GitHub your public key, and you initiate a connection. So the client communicates to the server and says, hey, I want to open up an SSH connection. The server goes, OK, here's a random message. And you encrypt it, and then you give it back to them, and they get decrypt it, and they go, OK, that's the message that I sent you. And then you guys can communicate. It's good. Here's an example of a host key. This will be stored when you communicate with another host. This is how you verify that the host that you're trying to reach is not somebody else. Because that's how you can perform a man in the middle attack and just accept whatever is trying to communicate with you. So like I said before, with brute force, um, this would be an example of DES encryption. Take about 400 seconds to decrypt with a supercomputer. With your normal computer, it would probably take you know, a couple, couple minutes, maybe a couple days, depending on how complex it was, was and how quickly you got it. But as soon as you start getting into AES encryption lengths, this would take a billion, billion years with the fastest supercomputer in the world. So that's a long time. You probably don't have to worry about that. So SSH and U. Um, I made a digital ocean droplet. And I'm going to SSH into it. So to SSH into it, you do SSH, the username, and then the IP address. And it will go, hey, you've never talked to this person before. Do you want to save this host key, and do you want to continue connecting with them? I do. And it'll ask me for a password, which I will copy and paste because it's really long. Um, so you paste that password in. It goes, hey, that's the right password, and then it's going to ask me to change it. But now, after I did that, it's going to remember this host. And let me do, um, shrink this a little bit. And that's the IP address there. So it saves that known host key in there and goes, if I try to communicate with that and it doesn't have that same host key, it's going to go, hey, this is somebody else. Are you sure? Like, you need to go back and change this host key so that way you don't end up talking to somebody who you're not trying to talk to. And here are some resources. Oh, it's not showing up. Um, here are some resources if you want to understand more. Or if you want, you can just talk to me, and I'll explain anything. Thank you. Any questions?